Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast. Today, we are doing episode 207, and we are going to be talking about SeaWorld and SeaWorld incidents. Now, you guys really enjoyed our episode on... The exotic pet attacks, right? Is that what you were about to say? No, I was about to say Disney. (laughs) Oh, well, yeah, that was good, too. Yeah, yeah. Just most recently, you guys really liked Disney. So, and you did like the exotic pet episode too. So I guess both of those have led us to SeaWorld. And before we jump in, we do have some exciting news. We have finally brought back milehiremerch.com. You guys have been asking us where our merch is for a long time now. We've been wondering where where it's been too. (laughs) Yeah, it's been um, a bit of a journey trying to get this all set up for you guys. But we're really proud of this collection that we have put out. And I think you guys are really going to like the pieces that we have in this drop. Yeah. I mean, we we spent a lot of time on the designs, on finding mm-hmm. really high quality garment to mm-hmm. print the designs on. Mm-hmm. Everything is top notch. I mean, we, we didn't want to sell anything that we wouldn't like ourselves or buy ourselves. So yep. we spent a ton of time trying to find the best stuff out there. We're really proud of it. Yep. And I mean, you know, we weren't just sitting around doing nothing. We were working really hard on the new, <laughs> yeah. new website. We ship all over the world. And it is all run by us, which is which yep. is really cool. We control the whole process, mm-hmm. and we have you know family friends working on it, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. And shipping it, and- yeah. So we really love it if you check it out, support the crew. And there's merch for every show. Yes, all in one yep. place. Yep. So if you're a fan of the sex, you're a fan of lights out. We have merch for all those shows in mm-hmm. one place. You can add items from any of the shows. Even Kendall Ray's got merch now, which is yeah. cool. She's starting off her collection small. We'll be, yeah. be growing it over time. Yeah. I wanted to start it small, but I did start with a charity item. So we 100% of the profit yeah. from that is being donated. So if you want to throw that in yeah, the car, you can just check make out a donation to National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Amazing cause. Yes. So you can check out all the different collections in one place. You can add them all to your cart and we'll ship it all together to you. That's which right. is amazing. So check it out. It's milehiremerch.com. Now... A lot of us kind of became aware of the issues at SeaWorld and other establishments like it across the world Right when Blackfish came out, which that came out in what year was it? Yeah, it was, a, it was, a it was few like years 10 ago. years ago, 2011. 13. 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah. Okay, so almost 10 years ago. Oh, that's crazy. I know. I was actually like maybe four years ago. No, definitely not. I know it feels definitely like I not. watched it only like four years ago, though. Well, remember, we went to SeaWorld in 2012 before that came out. I had no idea. It was like our. Oh, yeah, it was. Um, it was, was that her first trip? Actually, to that was 2011. Yeah, Orlando? it was like our senior trip. Yeah, that's right. It was like my first time I'd ever been to any sort uh-huh. of like major theme parks like that before. Yeah. And of course, none of it really seemed alarming to us at the time. Well, no, it's a, they make it look like a very, very happy place. They do. It's fun. It's and plus, oftentimes brought there as a child, and you see all of this stuff going on. You see adults enjoying it. Seems like a happy educational experience. Well, I think that's just how any you know, same with zoos or anywhere else where mm-hmm. there's animals in captivity is that you're taught from a very very young age. And some I know, zoos, but yeah, yeah some zoos. I mean. That's the thing. When I say zoos, I'm not talking about all zoos. There's different zoos at different levels of, mm-hmm. of care and facilities. Some are more so, on the sanctuary side. Totally. There's different, totally different categories right. within the word zoo. But I'm talking more like your main, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for-profit zoos mm-hmm. that profit are- Profit over uh, everything, entertainment right, over trying everything. to attract as many visitors as possible. And right. I remember growing up and going to, I lived in several different places. So I've been to actually to a lot of zoos. And I remember- uh, when I was a child and I hope I can dig up the picture or there's even a video clip of me at the Oklahoma City Zoo and I was watching the dolphin show and I remember being in the crowd and they were like we need a volunteer to come up oh and, you were that kid no I was I, I was that kid I got picked I was like yeah me 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 and I got picked and I remember he's proud of it clearly yeah, yeah hell no <laughs> and if you ask it's funny you'll have to ask my mom about this story sometime because my mom like this is like a core memory for her she loves this this whole story but I was you know how in like most of those big tank areas they mm-hmm. have like a little like very narrow walkway to get to yeah. sort of the stage area where sometimes like this was the dolphin show. And so the dolphins can come up onto this sort of concrete beach like in landing yeah. right. to where they can pet them and whatever. And mm-hmm. so I went up there and I almost like jumped in 
to the tank with them what? because they made a joke of like, do you want to jump in and swim with the dolphins? And you're like, yeah, And I, I literally almost like started going <laughs> forward to like dive in and they had to like kind of grab me back and like, no, 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 we're just kidding. And then, and then I ended up like petting the dolphins in front of this whole crowd and everything. Oh, and I was like part of the show. Big star. Yeah, it was a big, <laughs> it was a big moment for me. Okay. Like it was, it's a core memory for me. And, Amazing. and I remember just thinking how cool these animals were. Yeah. And I didn't know all of the other things that, you know, go into this yeah. whole show mm -hmm. and what these do what these dolphins' lives are truly like because they really try to present you only the 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 good parts, right? Of course, yeah. They try to make you feel like it's a, a happy situation. And, and that even they like we being were... there. Like the dolphins right. enjoy which the dolphins might enjoy the show. They might enjoy doing the tricks and stuff. Probably it's, because it's the most entertaining part of their lives is right. performing. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because when you see the show, obviously they're like thrilled and they look mm -hmm. happy and they're like waving their little Making fins their, around. You know, and like to the human being, and, you know, it makes it seem like, oh, they're having fun too. And in reality, they're literally trained to do this. And in their mind, they could yeah. be depressed and hating their lives and plotting your death, which we'll get to later. But they're like, if I'm yeah. going to get fed, but, yeah. I got to do this. Yes. Right. Yeah. Even when we went, I remember... Um, at SeaWorld, I don't even know if they have this anymore, but they they probably do. But it was kind of like a round tank yeah. that, you know, the dolphins swam around you on the inside. And it was so calming. Mm -hmm. They had like this really relaxing music. And I remember like feeling like this is like a spiritual experience. All these dolphins are swimming around us and there's so many of them. And then now looking back at that, I'm like, what the fuck? That is so depressing that they're just swimming in circles in these small tanks. Of course They never not. tell you like, Oh yeah, well in the wild these animals can swim from yeah, what Africa are they to do? North America. Put a sign on the wall. Right, right. These animals are mistreated and depressed. Well, I think the thinking behind the a lot of these establishments is that because these dolphins are often bred in captivity that they don't know any different. So therefore mm -hmm. that's what they try to Yeah. Yeah, they are sort of brainwashed into thinking that this is it and this is their life. But I think they're forgetting the instinctual part of the animal that yeah. you can't, no matter how much you train them, no matter how much you bond with them, mm -hmm. you never can remove that instinctual part of the animal. And for dolphins, it's, you know, being able to be with pods of dolphins and mm -hmm. be out in, in open water and have freedom. I mean, it's interesting, like dolphins have behind humans, they have like the largest brain to body ratio, which is, which is interesting. Mm. And so they're we as we all know, dolphins are extremely intelligent. They have language. They have all of these advanced, intelligent skills, and we're just sort of programmed to believe that dolphins are there to, you know, entertain us, and, mm -hmm. and you know they can do these cool tricks and with balls and hoops, yeah, and whatever, and orcas, exactly, and orcas as well, which is a type of dolphin, which is a yeah, totally. Different. Oh, they are, huh? Yeah. Right, right. I, I always just forget that. Looking up um, to put in person into perspective how active they are in the wild. Orcas have evolved, according to National Geographic, to swim up to 40 miles a day. That's amazing. Diving 100 to 500 feet several times a day, every day. So you take something that's supposed to be swimming 40 miles a day. And diving. And diving. And then you put them in a feet, tank yeah. that's 30 feet deep, 20 feet wide. Yeah. And it's. I think the average person goes to these places and sees like, oh, this is a big tank. Right. Plenty of room here. Yeah, but they don't you. realize what they're You don't live in the ocean, bro. In nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. So yeah. I feel like it's something that so many of us have participated in at some point in our life, unknowing how I mean what we're actually seeing. And yeah, I mean unless you've like really gone yeah. down the marine biology route. Yeah. Which most of us haven't taken a right. marine biology class or but even if you've seen Blackfish. I mean, Blackfish right. was True. huge. It yeah. was so monumental. It made such huge waves for people. I mean, so yeah. many people will never go to a SeaWorld ever again. I know I could never be there and en enjoy a show yeah. with what I know now, you know? And good thing that there are documentaries like that that exist that educate us because otherwise we just go with what we know and what we see other people doing and seeing the adults around us enjoying and telling us is good and educational and and so much of it goes back to schooling too, like from yeah. a young age. I mean, education, and this just not just with animals, but it goes across the board for so many other. I mean, history into other, you know, human conflicts and and everything else. There's just so many things that from a young age, all of us were programmed to believe, and mm -hmm. and it takes 
something like Blackfish or some type of education. new release of information mm -hmm. or education to kind of open your eyes to the issue that's right there in front of you the entire time. Right. But because you didn't have any of that knowledge, yeah. you never saw it as an as an issue. Right. right? So, and just from personal experience too, being there and seeing it, you know, you're you're only seeing one very filtered side of it, and there's so many other sides to the life of of these animals mm -hmm. that you don't see. Well, we're not just gonna be focusing on the you know the issues with the animals in captivity, but also incidents that occur at places or at Sea World, and we're gonna take a look at some of those over history and you know how's that sort of played into the larger issue at hand. So with that being said, we're going to dive into SeaWorld. Dive in literally. Dive in literally pretty deep too and uncover some of the things that have incidents that have happened at SeaWorld. Yeah, pretty shocking things if you haven't heard. So if you don't know what SeaWorld is, it's a chain of ocean-themed amusement parks in the United States. And the parks also have rides like roller coasters, drop towers. There's also hotels, restaurants, you know, other typical attractions that are all kind of part of one bigger yeah we rode the manta ray roller coaster at sea world is that what it was called yeah it was like a big manta ray they had really i remember that being pretty fun i mean i remember were, the yeah. mummy one they have a mummy one there yeah there was some type of mummy thing mm. unless i'm just crazy at sea world at sea world i'm like, pretty what? sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure right, now i gotta look are it up. you thinking of uh water world's mummy ride <laughs> it's possible you know it's possible that is not quite not sea world the same thing <laughs> Um, actually, I really do think there was some type of mummy thing when we were there. I'm pretty sure it was There's like a big drop. I think you're literally thinking of Universal Studios right no, now. It definitely had some like ancient civilization uh, themed. Maybe it was Atlantis. Could have been like Atlantis themed. There was something like that. We went on it like three times. Okay. Anyway, it was 10 years ago. <laughs> like what? What trip were you on? <laughs> so the most popular SeaWorld Park is the one in Orlando. And there are also two other parks in San Antonio, Texas, and another one in San Diego, California. There actually used to be a SeaWorld outside of Cleveland, Ohio from 1972 to 2000. These parks make hella money, man. Do they? Yep. Back in 2018, it was estimated that SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment made almost $1.4 billion in Damn. revenue. And this was crazy. I found this interesting. Even after Blackfish, you know, and all that broke loose and the truth kind of like came out. Yeah. Their estimated net worth as of this month, is $3.32 billion. Damn. It's almost like they're having a wow. resurgence, like they're yeah. coming yeah. back in a way. Yep. Also, most deaths that happen at SeaWorld Parks are related to the rides. But we're just going to be focusing on the incidents today that involved SeaWorld orcas. Yeah, I'll do another episode on just like theme park disasters because yeah, we could there's do a that. lot of those. I don't know. We'd have to have several episodes for that. Yeah. There's a lot. It's scary. Somebody. Let us know if you would like to see that. Anyway, these parks are most famous, like we said, for their animal shows. They train captive sea mammals like dolphins, otters, walruses, penguins, sea lions, and orcas to perform for a stadium full of people. SeaWorld is most well known for their Shamu orca shows. And these shows have been definitely the most controversial part of SeaWorld. Shamu was the name of one of SeaWorld's first female orcas. All the whales used in those shows had different names, but they were usually just referred to as Shamu. And during the Shamu shows, the orcas performed tricks, swam around, and at the end, they did famous moves where they would splash the audience. A famous move. The crowd goes wild with yeah, the splash. Yeah. There's also a little platform in the front of the tank where the orcas can slide out and get closer to the audience. So that's some Yeah, what that's you like did. what I was standing on. Almost right. dived in, yeah. I almost dived in that bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was in Oklahoma, okay? We say dived in. There they are. So you were on that thing, Josh? Yeah. Damn, and that's was... kind of risky to stick a kid yeah, up there. Yeah, I had like little sandals on. Yeah. And why would you joke with a kid and be like, Do you want to jump in? in? They're like, sure. <laughs> and back in the day, trainers used to swim with the orcas during the Shamu shows. They would train them to do these elaborate tricks where the trainers would ride on their backs or do jumps with them. And it kind of looked like circus tricks. That's amazing that they can just launch themselves onto the water. It's amazing that they can so just strong. like train them to yeah. do that. Like, how does this thing not just eat you? Well, they want food. Yeah. 
I guess if you deprive them of food, that's enough. Yeah. And they give them a ton of fish. And they believe their only part of their point of their existence is to do this, so. They're beautiful animals, though. They really are. My parents have had a chance to see them in the wild before. Oh, really? Well, like out, out in Washington, in Puget Sound, they stay they're out there. Look at this. That's just like, what? I mean, it is at the same time. It's like what? Like yeah, what the it's fuck? Like, yeah, it's yeah. like. Is that necessary? No. Oh, that's the baby one too. Oh, is it? Yeah, that was just Maybe. the baby. That was no. It's definitely the smaller one. Look at the fin on the back. Big mm-hmm. God, the amount of muscle in those things. Oh, they're just so strong. Blows my mind. Yeah, it's insane. Also, there's this clip that shows an example of where they pick a kid out to pet. Shamu's dorsal fin and give them fish. But those parts of the show were actually removed. And in fact, SeaWorld has gotten rid of all of their live theatrical orca shows altogether. So we are going to go over why that happened. But before that, we're going to do a quick rundown of some orca facts. So orcas are commonly known as killer whales, but they're not actually whales. And like Janelle talked about earlier, they're actually the largest member of the dolphin family. They're also highly intelligent creatures. They have very complex brain structures, and they're also very social animals who have rich emotional lives. And females are dominant in the natural orca hierarchy, so they're matriarchal creatures. Orcas use echolocation, and they have complex vocalizations that develop unique languages and culture between orcas from different areas of the world. Think about that for a second. They have their own language and cultures Mm -hmm. within families of orcas in the wild. It's like different accents. Yeah, like there's a... French orca, which is a Canadian orca. An orca's rostrum is its snout, and its pectoral fins or pecs are its front two flippers. The dorsal fin sits on the top of the head behind the blowhole, and the tail is called the fluke. They really do, if you look at their body structure, they really do have that similar structure to a dolphin. There have been no recorded orca-caused human fatalities in the wild. Wild orca attacks on humans are extremely rare in the wild. When they're out in the wild, 99% of orcas have dorsal fins that stand up straight. But in captivity, 100% of male orcas have collapsed dorsal fins that flop over to the side. And you probably just saw that in some of the clips we just showed. That's because of temperature and speed. Captive whales breach or come above the water more since they're performing tricks. And they can't swim as fast since they're in pretty small tanks. So the collagen in the dorsal fin breaks down, which causes it to flop over. Orcas have had a dorsal fin collapse after just one month in captivity. But after they're released back into the wild, it only takes about a month for the dorsal fin to stand up straight again. That's such a wild thing, honestly. It's like a a visual sign of Mm -hmm. unhappiness. Mm -hmm. They're used to swimming for miles and miles through the open ocean, but in captivity, they spend their lives in concrete tanks. And these tanks are only around 30 feet deep and 100 or so feet long, which I'm like... Who thought this was a good idea in the first place? Someone that doesn't give a shit. People that want to make money. money. Yeah. It's crazy because like, I don't, I don't know if you've seen the videos of like the world's deepest pool. Have oh, you guys yeah. seen that? Like that's I've been that. going viral across. No, it. I haven't. So in Dubai, there is the world's deepest pool, which is 170 feet deep. For just humans to go scuba dive down and there's like all these cool places you can take pictures and uh, there's glass on the outsides of it so people can see you dive mm. down there. But I'm like, if we have a 170 foot deep pool for humans to just play around in why do we have dolphins or any sort of captive sea animals in such small tanks because it's more expensive more management it's true more more maintenance yeah so it just comes back to money i guess always in concrete captivity tanks these orcas aren't able to use the full range of their echolocation abilities plus they're put with other orcas who speak different languages than they do or they might not get along well with them their integral social and family structures are disrupted and are removed entirely, which means that they might become more aggressive with other orcas. But in those small tanks, they can't move away to avoid aggression from other orcas. There's no tank that will ever be big enough or specialized enough for an orca to live a long, happy life. Because obviously, I mean, even if you built a right. 300 foot deep pool by mm-hmm. 300 feet, it's still a small tank. Mm-hmm. considering the size of the ocean and you know what wild orcas have uh, to swim in. Some orcas in captivity actually show signs of depression, like sitting motionless in tanks, almost like they're floating their dead. Aggression towards humans and orcas, as well as self-injury 
and just repetitive behaviors. So that leads us to the first incident we're going to talk about, which is the 1971 Shamu incident. And we'll get into that right after this first break. As a Malhar listener, you know the world can sometimes be a scary place. But no matter what happens out there, home should be the safest place there is for you and your family. That's why we recommend our personal favorite home security system, the Simply Safe Home Security System. Simply Safe is advanced whole home security that puts you and your home and your family safety first. Here's why we love it. I have the full system from Simply Safe, which includes a video doorbell. I've got all the sensors, the glass breaks. I've also got indoor cameras in my house, and I have outdoor cameras that attach to the outside of my house. So I have complete 360 coverage. So don't try coming to break into my house because you will not be able to. I will see you a mile away. And if for some reason you do come in, you're going to be met with the loudest siren you've ever heard, and the police will be on the way in a matter of seconds. Simply Safe offers comprehensive protection not only against intruders and burglary, but against expensive home hazards from flooding to fires. Nobody likes dealing with that. With 24-7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents take action the moment a threat is detected, dispatching police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home. Simply Safe uses proprietary video verification technology so that monitoring agents can visually confirm the threat in order to get higher priority 911 dispatch, which is really cool. Monitoring plans are affordably priced at a dollar a day with no long-term contract or hidden fees because feeling safe at home shouldn't break the piggy bank. You can customize a perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafecom slash mile higher. You can get a system for your apartment if you want. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafecom slash mile higher. Did you know that one out of six couples struggle with infertility? Seriously, that's a staggering statistic that most people don't know or aren't ready to talk about. But we need good data and information about our bodies in order to have informed conversations with our doctors and make the best decisions for ourselves and our futures. And that's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones right at home with a simple finger prick. Then you just mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, which is how many eggs you have compared to other people your age, and other important fertility factors. And the results go deep into what every hormone means. And then you can download the results and review with your doctor for next steps. Traditional testing can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gets you that same information at a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash mile higher, you can get $20 off your test. Also, if you have HSA or FSA, you can put those dollars toward modern fertility. So if you want kids today or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound info about your body can help you to make a decision that's right for you. Right now, modern fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash mile higher. That means your test will cost $179 instead of the hundreds or thousands that it could cost at the doctor's office. So get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash mile higher. That's modernfertility.com slash mile higher. So the first incident that we are going to be looking at involves the original Shamu. Shamu was captured off the coast of Washington and sold to SeaWorld San Diego in 1965. Back in 1971, Annette Eckes was a 22-year-old secretary at SeaWorld San Diego. And one day, Shamu's trainer and a PR director asked Annette if she wanted to do a photo shoot. They wanted her to ride on top of Shamu in a bikini for some promotional photos. And she thought it would be fun, so she said yes, and a bunch of news outlets showed up to videotape this stunt. However, Shamu was only used to working with male trainers wearing wetsuits, but Annette was only wearing a bikini. She was the first woman to ever ride Shamu and the first person to ride without a wetsuit. And those may seem like small details, but they actually make a huge difference. Shamu was probably really confused by the whole situation. Those changes can really disrupt their behavior. Plus, Annette had zero experience working with orcas. It's pretty surprising that they even thought that this was okay, that anyone at SeaWorld even had this idea or thought that they could pull something like this off. It didn't consider the risk at all. In the past, two people actually tried to ride Shamu in normal bathing suits, a bikini model and a male trainer, but Shamu actually attacked both of them. It's not clear exactly what happened with those incidents, but we know that they happened. So you would think that would have been on their minds when putting poor Annette out there. Shamu had also been acting pretty agitated the past two months. 
But Annette didn't know about any of that. Everyone reassured her that she would be safe. And at first, everything was fine. Annette got on and Shamu took her for a quick lap around the pool. Then Annette blew her whistle. Board and ride this gentle giant. This is a training session filmed as Anne Eckes climbs on the back of Shamu. Maybe some cold ass water. Um, yeah, seriously. She's like riding it like a bull. She's like got her hand up. And of course, she's thinking this is a cool experience, a cool opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, not having any real understanding a for how dangerous it is. And blows the whistle. And Shamu pulls up to the side to let her off. Look how small that pool is, too. Yeah. God. The then pool. a few minutes later, Anne climbs back on board. Okay. And this is when things start to go wrong. But halfway around, Anne slips, and Shamu spooks. Now, she is in big trouble. Look at the water, how rough it yeah. is just from this end. Oh, yeah. Well, look how small a pool it is. Yeah. This thing's got so much power. Oh, yeah. freaking a diver jumps in immediately to free Ann, but he's no match for this four-ton whale. So she's being grabbed by her leg and dragged around the pool. And the trainers are trying the to stick whale poles out. The Ann around like a pool toy as handlers frantically try to guide him to the side. And trainers are trying to stick poles out for Annette to grab onto. And that's clearly not working. I mean... And if they try to pull her away, Shamu's going to rip her leg. Yeah. Finally, Shamu surfaces, but Anne's leg is locked in his powerful jaws. What do you even do? What do you even do? Take it easy. Give me a fish. Why would you get a fish? I guess, but like, I'm surprised Shamu's just sitting there with her leg in his mouth. After a few frightening minutes, a handler pushes a pole down on the whale's tongue, and he lets go. Wow, her leg seems to be. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess the hands a lot. Yeah, like the fact mm-hmm. he just like chomps stitches. down. And, yeah, a painful reminder. Yeah, that uh, could have been far, far worse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, but she had cuts, puncture wounds, and she had to get, like we said, two hundred stitches, and she was out of work for weeks after the incident. But it gets even worse. Only about a month after the incident, SeaWorld decides to bring it back to Shamu for more publicity photos. And while they were surrounded by reporters, Shamu and Annette made up. Is that what Shamu said? Which luckily that didn't go badly, but it's it's just mind blowing that they would even do that. It's all about their image to bring her back out there. And, you know, they want to make sure that everyone gets to hear Annette say that Shamu wasn't being violent. She was only trying to play with her. Newspapers published photos of Shamu giving Annette a kiss on the cheek. So SeaWorld's PR worked like a charm and just a few months later Shamu actually died from blood and uterine infections and she was only nine years old which is extremely young yeah it's so sad the fact that well okay it's kind of, I was reading about this it's kind of debated whether or not orcas in captivity live actually less than the wild I can't imagine how that would not be true but I don't know some people say it's up for debate but either way the uh study that i was reading showed that orcas live somewhere between 30 to 50 years in the wild and only 10 to 45 in captivity so their lifespan wow. can definitely be shortened, shortened. In captivity yeah uh, mm-hmm. which I mean, only that, makes sense right I yeah i feel like that's an argument that's made all the time for animals in captivity like they'll live much longer lives yeah which may be in some cases but certainly not here mm-hmm. so here's what's crazy is Annette ended up suing the park and she won $75,000 in compensation but then SeaWorld appealed the decision and they said that they weren't responsible for her injuries because riding Shamu wasn't in the scope of her normal work 
duties, even though they're the ones who fucking asked her to go Mm -hmm. and do this for PR for the park. Anyway, a judge agrees with them and Annette had to give the money back. It's jacked up. Isn't that insane? Oh my God. I wonder if they even covered her medical bills for the injuries from maybe under the table maybe but not that we know that wasn't that wasn't cheap either to get all that medical attention after that i'm just shocked that she went back i know i'm shocked she went back and was even willing to get near you would i would feel like in most cases people would have just to make them look good too never gone back to the especially the exact same whale yeah just potent could have ripped your leg off Mm -hmm. i mean i'm sure that i'm sure what happened was that the trainers and stuff were telling her oh you know he just was You know, he didn't mean to. He was she, just trying. Yeah. She was, you know, she didn't mean to, and mm-hmm. was just trying to was just playing or something like that, which could have been true. But oh man! But next, we're going to be talking about some incidents that happened a little bit later in 1987. So, 21 year old Jonathan Smith was an orca trainer at SeaWorld San Diego during that time. He was only a college sophomore when he decided it might be fun to work with orcas. He had zero experience, but he was in good shape and can talk well over the microphone. So SeaWorld hired him. As for his training, Jonathan said that it was a learn-as-you-go approach and a trial-and-error process. He'd only had two months of experience working with orcas when this next incident happened. On March 4th, 1987, Jonathan was performing a pretty typical Shamu show for an audience. He was riding on an orca's back when one of them suddenly grabbed him. Listen to what the little like background noise is saying. It's so eerie. That is so creepy. I know. And there's not much anybody can do. Yeah. I mean, once that happens, I mean, you're at the mercy of the whales at that point. Totally. But what happened was the orca dragged him underwater and then back up to the surface. At that point, Jonathan was bleeding and obviously terrified, but he still smiled and waved at the audience. He didn't want to scare them. Then a second orca slammed into him and they dragged him 30 feet to the bottom of the pool over and over again. They pulled him up and down smashing him against the concrete and jonathan thought he was going to die after two and a half minutes of sheer terror jonathan was able to escape officials at SeaWorld, of course did not want word of the attack getting out the show kept going like nothing happened after the other trainers got jonathan out of the water (laughs) they also didn't call an ambulance to the pool area instead they took jonathan hundreds of yards away where nobody could see paramedics coming to help him which you know you want to jump on injuries like this immediately but this only made his injuries much worse. The chief trainer even told a news outlet that the orcas were just playing and got a little carried away and bumped into John. Luckily, Jonathan survived, but he spent nine days in the hospital. He suffered from bruised kidneys, a six-inch laceration to his liver, and he actually ended up suing SeaWorld over the whole thing, and the case was settled out of court. But after the incident, SeaWorld's chairman said that trainers would never get into the water with orcas again. But just a few months later, the company let trainers get back into the water with the orcas. And there was another orca incident at SeaWorld San Diego later that same year. -year 26-year-old John Sillick had worked there as a trainer for two years by 1987. He was pretty used to doing shows in the water with the orcas, but on November 21st, 1987, while he was performing, something went terribly wrong. He was riding on top of one of the orcas, and they were getting ready to perform their next trick. One of the orcas was going to do a jump near them, but there was some sort of mix-up. And the audience watched as John was crushed in between two six-ton orcas. Wrong. The 
former was crushed between the two whales, suffering a broken back and massive internal injuries. Amazingly, he survived. That's very lucky that he lived. Six tons coming down on you. That's insane. That's insane. And SeaWorld said that this was just a timing problem on John's part, that it was his fault. Nice. And they denied that it was an act of aggression from the orca. Yep, of course they did. Just a mistake, but this accident still highlights just how dangerous working with orcas mm -hmm. can be. John suffered a broken back, pelvis, leg, hip, and ribs, plus internal injuries, and he needed two operations and actually had to relearn how to walk as a result of this. So now we're going to talk about Kayla, who is a female orca who had been in SeaWorld's care since 1988. And she was actually the first killer whale born at SeaWorld San Antonio. And in 1991, SeaWorld moved Kayla to their park in Ohio. It seemed like she was a pretty easy whale to work with, but she had one crazy incident caught on tape in 1995. That day, Kayla was performing a typical Shamu show and things started off pretty normally, but all of a sudden, Kayla stopped listening to her trainers. Kayla freestyled for a minute or so at first, and the whole time the trainer was telling people not to give Kayla attention because she wasn't performing her commands. She's like floating around, not listening. She's waving, she's so cute. Yeah, you can hear them being like, yeah, ignore her. She's yeah. not doing what she's supposed to be doing. Kind of blaming the audience too. It's weird. Yeah. So then without warning, Kayla actually lunges out of the water. Okay. So she kind of pokes the tip of her head out of the water and touches the barrier between the tank and the audience. And then she slips back into the water. And a few seconds later, she pops right back up. And this time she managed to get her head over the barrier just a few inches from the audience. Oh. Oh my God. The kids are like right yeah. now, like petting her. Oh my! You could hear them. <laughs> Do not touch her. And they're trying to like stay calm and yeah. keep everyone enjoying the show. Oh man, that's. Close. Oh my God. <laughs> Obviously, this incident could have had a really bad ending. In the wild, orcas beach themselves onto ice to catch sea lions and other prey. Kayla was showing similar behavior in that video. And all of those people that reached out to pet her got really lucky. She could have easily grabbed one of them and dragged them into the water. SeaWorld Ohio actually closed down in 2000. And unfortunately, Kayla died of lung disease at SeaWorld Orlando in 2019. And she was only 30 years old when she died. Yeah, I was going to say, like, everybody's like, oh, it just wants to be petted like it's a dog or something. Yeah. And it's that's in a, a hunting behavior that she's mm -hmm. exhibiting. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that that didn't end worse. So today we're going to be talking a lot about one particular orca named Tilikum, which Tilikum was a male orca that lived most of his life in captivity at SeaWorld Orlando. It's also what Blackfish is about as well. But... Tilikum was captured from Icelandic waters in 1983 along with another male orca and a female orca. He was only two years old when he was captured from his family. Then he was shipped off to a zoo in Iceland, and he waited there for a year before he was shipped off to Sealand of the Pacific. The names are similar, but Sealand wasn't a SeaWorld park. Sealand was actually an aquarium in Victoria, British Columbia. At night, the orcas were held in 20-foot pens that were about 30 feet deep. The staff turned off all the lights at night, so these whales spent a huge chunk of their lives trapped in a box with no stimulation. Basically equivalent to solitary confinement for a human and in prison. But again, these whales didn't do anything wrong. Tilikum had always been a pretty easy whale to work with at Sealand. Since he was so young, when he was captured, the trainers could mold a lot of his behavior. To train Tilikum, they brought in another trained orca. And when Tilikum messed up, the head trainer would deny both orcas food. That obviously made the other orca angry, 
and he would rake Tilikum by scratching his skin with his teeth. Tilikum would get raked up pretty bad, and the other two female whales at Sealand didn't get along with him. Plus, they were both pregnant, which changed the way that they behaved. The three orcas were cramped in a tiny pool, so Tilikum couldn't swim away from the other two orcas when they got aggressive with him. Here's a clip of the Sealand orca pool. To the killer whale pool, there has been a discussion of Dude, that's the possibility so of putting a, a net across or sectioning off a portion of this pool for the male killer whale uh, Tilikum. Yeah, look at their fins. Their uh, for fins. a number of reasons, this is an unacceptable proposal. One, we consider this pool to be really a minimum size for uh, oh, <clears throat> for acceptable nursing uh, space. The mother needs room to glide for the calf to nurse. It's done fairly well in here. We think that this size is working out. We feel that this is really a minimum. And any uh, really a minimum of this pool <laughs> what? in any direction or any dimension would really seriously compromise the ability of the calf to nurse. How about the uh, level of happiness of the animal? Yeah. Seriously. Not just like, what's the bare minimum for this thing to mm -hmm. exist? Yeah. Is what they're saying. It's insane. Mm -hmm. But the bad social relations between the orcas made Tilikum's life much more frustrating. And that frustration might have kept building and building until it hit a breaking point. And that breaking point led to the first recorded human death by a killer whale. Back in 1991... Kelty Byrne was a 21-year-old marine biology student who worked as a part-time orca trainer at Sealand. February 20th, 1991 started like any other normal day at the park. A crowd of people filled up the stadium to watch one of Sealand's famous orca shows. That day, Tilikum was set to perform a show with two other orcas named Heda and Nuka. The show went well and the crowd was getting ready to leave when something happened. Kelty slipped and fell into the pool. But before she could get back out, Tilikum grabbed her rubber boot and pulled her underwater. Two other female whales started swimming in circles around Kelty. The audience didn't realize what was going on at first, and Kelty started screaming for help, but there was nothing anyone could do. The orca drowned her during the attack. And after that incident, Sealand closed down. They sold off all of their whales to SeaWorld, including Tilikum. And only eight years later, Tilikum was involved in another fatal incident. On July 6, 1999, at 7.25 a.m., a SeaWorld Orlando employee checked on Tilikum and found a man's body draped over the orca's back. The victim was a 27-year-old man from South Carolina named Daniel P. Dukes. The day before, Daniel had visited SeaWorld, and he'd somehow managed to stay inside of the park after it closed for the day. And somehow, he ended up in the pool that night wearing only his underwear. We don't know if he fell in the pool or if Tilikum pulled him in, or if he got into the pool himself, but regardless, what happened next was pretty disturbing. Tilikum attacked Daniel. He grabbed him, threw him around, and caused a lot of bruising and damage while Daniel was still alive. At some point, Daniel died of hypothermia and or drowning. But if we go off of Tilikum's past and future aggressive incidents, it's also likely that he stopped Daniel's attempts to get out of the pool. Daniel suffered a lot of injuries before he died, but after he died. Tilikum started playing with his body. The orca even bit off Daniel's genitals at one point. It was pretty hard for employees to get Daniel's body out of the water, as Tilikum did not want them to take it. And after they finally got a hold of the body, Tilikum got very upset. Daniel was homeless and had prior convictions, mental health issues, and substance abuse issues. SeaWorld made sure to make that the center of the issue so that they could minimize the story. That way, people wouldn't ask questions about Tilikum's aggressive behavior or the park's lack of proper security. I think that's so weird, because it's like, okay, the orca has no idea that right. he's these things. Well, first off, even if he is, he doesn't deserve to be attacked by a whale, obviously. But like, mm -hmm. second off, that does, it's so weird. Like, oh, well, that's why he attacked him, because he was, you know, had a rough past or whatever. Like, yeah, pff, yeah, what does right. he mean? Well, Any excuse? well, they were trying to make it seem like he got like, messed up on drugs and mm. then like wandered in or something yeah but, well how does that fucking happen because we talk about security here in a second that just doesn't make sense yeah and his autopsy proved that he was not under the influence of any substances at the time of the incident and SeaWorld said that they had no security footage from telecom's pool that night but people pointed out that this was definitely super weird how did nobody see him was there just no security guards around and how could there be no security footage yeah of the pool the hell Basically, there were six-ton orcas swimming in concrete pools, and nobody was watching them. 
seemed really strange that nobody heard or saw the attack that night. Unfortunately, Daniel's death would not be the last fatal orca attack at a SeaWorld park. In fact, it wouldn't be the last time Tilikum killed someone. So we're going to take a look at the most famous captive orca attack next. So next we're going to be talking about Don Branchot, who was a senior trainer at SeaWorld Orlando. And in 2010, she was 40 years old and in great health. She was a really strong swimmer and she liked to run marathons. When Dawn was a kid, she and her family visited SeaWorld and it became her dream to work with the orcas. I feel like that was the dream of so many kids. Mm -hmm. I definitely went through a little phase like that where I wanted to, you know, be the one like flipping around with the mm -hmm. I mean, what kid doesn't? Even now, like I'll watch uh, videos on Instagram or TikTok of like people that work at yeah. rescues yeah, and who get to Just work get to with like with, cool, like mm -hmm. there's this guy I follow who like works at a, a wildlife sanctuary that have like wolves and lions and stuff and mm. he'll like just go into the wolves enclosure and just like hang yeah. out with these wolves and they're like they like love them yeah. and i'm just like that'd be so cool but also terrifying at the same time yeah, yeah it would because <laughs> they are i mean as, as much as you bond with can bond with a wild animal there's always that Still chance a wild that, animal yep yep so they can go wild just like what's his face the chimp travis yeah yeah even your own pet that you raise yeah. from a young age can turn on you yep totally but for 15 years, she got to live her dream and work at SeaWorld Orlando. And Dawn was beyond dedicated to her job. She was definitely one of the most well-respected and admired trainers there. Plus, she was a stickler about safety. Here's a video of Dawn performing actually three days before this incident occurred. Sorry, it's copywritten, so no music for you. But you can see she's wow. like... Standing yep. on him. Balance, though, dude. That's hella yeah. balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks so, like, graceful and majestic. It does. And the music they play, right. as you could hear, just like a tiny bit of it. It's very inspiring sounding mm -hmm. and peaceful and mm -hmm. magnificent. Yep. It's a huge, huge orca, though. Yeah. Massive. Yep. So as you can see, she was very good at what she did. Wow, Dawn. that's wild, just like. Hugging him. Yeah. yeah. Like when you're watching this, you think, oh, it looks like he's having just right. as much fun. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yep. And again, you know, many experts say that they do enjoy doing the shows because it's the only sort of like enrichment they have. Yeah. Yeah. And they like making people happy too. Right. They they get the reaction from the crowd and they, they get their treats and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they seem to be enjoying themselves right. during the actual performances. Right, but like... You're only performing a few hours out of the day. Right. And then you're just sitting in a dark box the exactly. rest of the day. Exactly, but people get that illusion that these animals are very happy. Right. And they don't even... The, it's just crazy that they are so... Look at that! Yeah, wow. God. The fact that there's like nothing in the tanks either. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for them to swim through. There's no tunnels. There's mm -hmm. no... Mm -hmm. There's nothing that resembles the ocean at all. It, yeah, it's just there a, should be fish all aquarium. around them. And, it's just basically an yeah. aquarium, yeah. a plain aquarium. It's just sick. A giant bathtub. Yeah. But when you're there, they make you seem make it seem like it's a very happy situation, educational, inspirational to see these trainers be so bonded with these animals. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, Dawn was a SeaWorld star. Her face was on the company's billboards, DVDs, and promotional materials. And on February 24th, 2010, Dawn was scheduled to work a Dine with Shamu show with Tilikum. And those shows took place in a pool surrounded by an outside cafe. Here's an example. Which when you're there, you're like, this is awesome. Right. Yeah. Uh, everybody wants to dine with Shamu. Right. Right. More about the Kaya as an individual, talk a little bit about killer whales in general, and also go into a lot more depth as to how their world and how we teach and train not only the killer whales, but all the animals they will see today during your business. That afternoon, Don and Tilikum performed their usual routine while guests are sitting there eating lunch. And finally, around 1.30 p.m., the show ended. 
and Don directed Tillicum to swim to the edge of the pool. And there's a shallow ledge that's built on the side of the pool where Don is able to lay down in a few inches of water. And Tillicum floated next to her a few inches away from her face. And it was time for their, quote, relationship session, which is some time that they set aside to bond with the orcas. How could you? I, I just, like, don't know how you how you would ever feel comfortable, like, laying down with your head next to a killer whale's mouth. Like... Yeah, I mean, there's like always that risk there, right? Yeah, I mean, they kill other animals. I mean, they're an apex predator of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And it'd be like if you got a great white, if we could train great white sharks. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my (laughs) lord. That came out so wrong. Let me (laughs) rephrase great white sharks. Oh my god. Oh man, it's been one of those days. But you know what I mean? Like, if you could train great white <laughs> sharks I'm so immature great white sharks yes would, would they do it would they swim with great white sharks if they could train them not yeah. to not to attack them probably it's like but even if you can't could train them there's always a chance that they're right they're gonna ditch right. that training well, and something instinctual is gonna kick in and it's the same vibe of like the circus and people running around with fucking tigers true yeah yeah and then mm-hmm. they get mauled by them randomly because something sets them off yeah or- tigers are Killer animals. Yeah, or even elephants. Yeah. Remember that? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot the name, but I know exactly the one you're Starts talking about. Starts with a T. Tyke. Yep, that's a horrific story. It makes me so upset. I've covered that before. Maybe we will do something similar to that or talk about circuses in the future on Mile Higher. But yeah, I mean, there's just always that chance. But when you're working with any type of wildlife, I mean, I look at Steve Irwin. Mm-hmm. I think he always knew that there's a risk with the work that he did. Yeah. But it's like your passion for these animals kind of mm-hmm. overtakes that. Yeah. And I just realized the reasoning for why great white sharks <laughs> aren't <laughs> in shows or have ever been in shows is because we've, we've never been able to keep a great white shark in captivity alive. Right. Like there's some, there for some, I, I can't remember the exact reason, but yeah, we were to- told that it is. Great white sharks Somewhere. can't be kept in, in captivity. They just die. Right. Um, and it's, and they have also their, obviously their predatorial instinct is mm-hmm. seemingly a lot higher than uh, a killer whale, but which yeah. seems hard to believe. And maybe that's not even true. But um, if we could keep great white sharks in captivity, there oh. is a possibility that they might be trainable and would any trainer... Probably there'd be, I mean, there's, tra- oh, there's yeah. people that swim with oh, yeah. sharks, so I'm sure there'd be, there'd be trainers things. laying next to a shark. It's just crazy to me that they're willing to get so close to these apex predators that yeah. could turn on them at I any know. point it's wild. and trust them to that point. So Don and Tillicum are having their relationship set- session and she's petting Tillicum and talking to him while the lunch guests, you know, are starting to walk out of the venue Meanwhile, a group of guests were gathering below the cafe deck, and the lower level had a glass viewing area where guests could see inside the tank. After the show, Tillicum was going to swim down towards that viewing area for a photo op. One of the trainers shouted up to Don that they were ready for Tillicum, and she was going to give him a cue to swim down there. But all of a sudden, Tillicum grabbed Don's ponytail. She tried to, you know, pull her hair out of his mouth, but Tillicum dragged her into the water. And some eyewitnesses have said that Tillicum grabbed her ponytail, but others say that he grabbed her arm. And it looks like he did both of these at one point, but he probably grabbed her ponytail first, it looks like. The staff immediately sounded the pool alarm and sent out a radio signal for a water rescue. And someone working at the park called 911. Orange County Fire Rescue. Uh, 6600 Sea Harbor Drive. Okay. Um, sea World, my fourth. Okay, and where's the patient located inside? They are at Shamu Stadium. We actually have a trainer in the water with one of our whales, the whale that they're not supposed to be in the water with. Okay. So we don't know what's going on. Um, we were just told to call and have people here on standby when they get the person out. Okay, and do you know if, you, so you don't know if the person was injured or if they're having a medical problem? No idea. Okay, very I, well. I don't, I don't even think they're out of the water yet. They're still in there with the whale, so. Okay, but someone is on scene and they are getting them out of the water there, now. There are people working on it, yes. There's okay. about two, three dozen people over there right now. All right, we'll get somebody in route. Okay, and... through gate number three to Shamu Stadium. Gate three. Gate three. 
All right, got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So while they're trying to get Don out of the water, they are slapping the top of the water. And this is a signal normally to the orca to release the trainer or whoever, whatever they're doing to release. But he just ignored all of their commands and kept pulling her deeper and deeper under the water. And she's trying to swim away and fight as hard as she could. But horrified guests are just standing there watching as she's fighting for her life. And they're just standing there seeing all of this from the the glass glass. viewing. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. At one point, she was able to break free and she tried swimming to the water's surface, but Tillicum slammed into her. Then he grabbed her by her arm and dragged her back down. And more and more staff members started rushing to the scene. They tried to deploy a weighted net to separate Don and Tillicum, but it wasn't working. He would not let go of her. And tragically, Don ended up dying in this attack. And we actually have a small clip of one of Don's best friends who worked at SeaWorld. And when she heard about the attack, she ran to the pool and saw something horrible. Um, Tillicum, the whale, had Don. Uh, he had Don in his mouth, mm-hmm. holding on to her. And they had deployed a net. They had you know all- what part of her body could you tell? At that point, it looked like sort of her torso because I could see her head. Okay. And I could also see that her hair was missing. Okay. So um, as I was running up, or no, that was afterwards. So I saw that her hair was missing. Um, I saw, and I wasn't in a wetsuit. I was in my street clothes from the other stadium. Right. So there was lots of people trying to deploy the net, pull the net, push him down, squeeze him down get him into a position where he would release the body. And he was already in the med pool? He was in In the the small pool. pool. Yes, they had got into where he was in the small pool. Okay. This particular pool um, does not have the false bottom lift on it. Okay. That D pool does, the pool that we actually got her out of. Okay. Um, My first thought was, I, I mean, very mad that we didn't have that this Option station there. yes mm-hmm. because of this animal we know he's killed two other people right and my, of course my heart's racing and i'm just praying at this point i didn't know that she was dead right and jim atchison was right there i saw him right there and i grabbed onto him and i just started to pray mm-hmm. and i i was looking at the same time i was praying and just trying to think what to do next okay. that's unbelievably terrifying i can't even imagine witnessing something like that mm-hmm. So the staff is trying to get Tillicum on a lift and they finally were able to do so and they brought him to the surface and at that point he's still holding on to Don. And at one point they pry his jaw open and part of Don's arm actually came off. And the paramedics are trying to revive her but there is no use. She was already gone. Tillicum had completely scalped her, bitten her all over her body and tore her left arm completely off. The list of injuries on her autopsy is too long for us to name them all. But Dawn died of drowning, blunt force injuries to her head and neck, and obviously just the brutal nature of the attack. And SeaWorld actually, in the way that they normally operate, tried to put some of the blame on her for the accident because she had been wearing a long ponytail. A SeaWorld executive even told a reporter that Dawn would agree that the accident was her fault. Wow. Isn't that the audacity? Just fucking Put unreal. all the blame on the trainer. But a lot of trainers wore their hair in ponytails at SeaWorld, and plenty of them interacted with orcas the same way that Dawn did before she died. So it's disgusting that this company tried to then shift the blame onto her. But not surprising, sadly. And even after all of this, killing two people, Tillicum still went back to performing live orca shows at SeaWorld. But after Dawn's death, SeaWorld banned trainers from swimming in the water with the orcas. Yeah, and then in uh, 2017, Telecom died yep. because he was being treated for a, quote, persistent, complicated bacterial lung infection. So. Yeah, and if you want to know more about Telecom's story, Blackfish really covers that well. Yeah, which it's, it was on Netflix for a while, but it's, yeah. it's only on Tubi, I think, now, or mm-hmm. I'm sure you can buy it on Prime Video mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. That one fucked me up for a long time. It just really puts into perspective the reality that these animals are facing. It's horrible. 
All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back to talk about some more incidents that happened in 2006. Isn't it crazy that in 2022, we've got high speed internet, celebrities going to space and electric cars, and yet people are still cleaning their butts with the nasty paper that they call toilet paper. Step into the 21st century today and upgrade your bathroom routine and start washing your butt with Hello Tushy bidets. Because smearing your business around with toilet paper is so 100 years ago. Join the future, people. The Hello Tushy bidet attachment washes your butt with fresh water for a way better clean than toilet paper. You simply spray and then just pat dry. The Tushy bidet attachment attaches right to your existing toilet. You don't need an electrician or a plumber. In fact, a monkey could do it. It installs in less than eight minutes and it cuts down your toilet paper use by 80%, saving money and paper waste. It also makes the restroom your best room with the complete Tushy system, including the Tushy Bidet attachment, ottoman, and toilet brush. We absolutely love our Tushy Bidet attachments at our house. I use it all the time, and I gotta say, it is so much cleaner than using toilet paper because you know what? It really does it just smear things around. So get a cleaner butt today. Hello Tushy has cleaned over 1 million happy butts. Join them and take care of your business the cleaner way. We want all of our listeners to have clean bums too. Visit hellotushy.com slash milehire to get 10% off plus free shipping right now. Tag us at Hello Tushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean butt with you. That's hellotushy.com slash milehire for 10% off. It's no secret that women face a lot of choices when it comes to their reproductive health. Luckily, getting birth control and sexual wellness products could be one less thing that you have to worry about with favor. You'll never have to make a trip to the doctor for those items or wait in line at the pharmacy for your birth control ever again. Favor provides personalized access to care from the comfort of your home and delivery right to your door in discreet packaging on time, every time. You may recognize them as the pill club, but they are now called Favor. Favor offers professionally prescribed birth control subscriptions and sexual wellness products delivered straight to your door for free. Favor carries over 120 FDA approved brands and ships to all 50 states. And most brands of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $7 per month without insurance. Favor delivers birth control to your door for free in discreet packaging, along with fun self-care gifts and goodies. And what's great is their licensed medical team is just a text away to provide you with the care that you deserve. So sign up for birth control in just five minutes. Skip the office visit and waiting in line at the pharmacy and get treated right. Right now, when you go to hayfavor.com slash mile higher, Favor is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every mile higher podcast listener who becomes a patient. Your donation will help low income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's hayfavor.com slash mile higher to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember, that's hayfavor.com slash mile higher, and you must use that link to make your donation. As a small business owner, I've learned that time is even more valuable than money. And one thing I have very little of these days is time. And the last thing I have time for is going to the post office to ship packages or mail bills. Because every time I go to the post office, I swear it doesn't matter what time it is, there is a line out the door. And for some reason, post offices are just super, super slow. So I don't do that anymore, and I haven't for years, actually, because I use stamps.com, which makes mailing and shipping super quick, easy, and it saves me tons of money. Stamps.com can save you time, money, and stress as well. For more than 20 years, stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses, including mine, and stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. Streamline your shipping process with Stamps.com's easy-to-use software. You just need a computer and a printer. You don't need any special supplies or equipment, which is great. And you can get up and running it in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, and anywhere you want to send. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, or maybe you buy a lot of stuff on Amazon and you want to print labels faster. Or, you know, maybe you just like to send a lot of letters to your friends. So whether you're in office sending invoices and Etsy shop sending your products or a warehouse shipping out order, stamps.com is the ultimate solution. So stop wasting time and start saving money when you use stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code MILEHIRE, that's one word, for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. There's no long-term commitments or contracts to try it out. 
Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code MILEHIGHER. So in 2006, there were two major incidents at SeaWorld San Diego where the orcas dragged trainers underwater. On November 15th, 2006, a trainer named Brian Rokich was performing a Shamu show with an orca named Orchid. The audience was having a great time watching the orcas and trainers perform their tricks as usual, but at one point they noticed one of the orcas was acting strange. Brian started swimming fast toward the edge of the pool, and then all of a sudden, Orchid grabbed him by the leg and pulled him underwater. Look at them all slopping the water. Well, meanwhile, the music's going on. It's so Yeah, exciting. it really is. You would think that'd be part of the safety protocol to maybe cut the music. Yeah, for real. But I don't think they want to. They don't want to scare people who are watching. Yeah, and maybe that would make uh, it would be even like it'd be more different jarring. for the yeah. orcas too. Right. Maybe it would trigger them even more. So. Right. But it's it's very unsettling to listen to that music all this time. Yeah, and they're trying to like distract them with fish and stuff so, so that he can swim out. Yeah. Wow, he's super lucky that they released. They're probably just bored. They're like, I'm just tired of doing the same old stuff every day. Right. And they're probably, I, don't, I wonder if they even have the intelligence to feel like they're being taken advantage of almost. Or they like, could. They you know, could. Like it they're could be angry. Anger. They're like, it's because it's, it just, it seems like in the way also that some of them have killed before humans that it's like almost like trying to teach a lesson versus mm-hmm. it because they could kill you so easily in like seconds. They could just yeah. put you in your mouth, snap you in two and be done with it. It but but the way that they do it's almost like trying to send a message. I don't know. That's just my take. I mean, it, you could be right, could be wrong, but I don't know. That's that's an interesting point. Like they're it's so possible. intelligent that they're like, look at what I'm yeah. doing. Like they they are probably way more intelligent than we even. Although right. they in the wild they do play with their prey too. They do. Mm-hmm. They do. So maybe that's just yes. an instinctual thing. They like to just. Mm-hmm. I mean, they literally like torture their prey before they yeah they do eat it. Mm-hmm. They flip seals out of the water and. Yeah, so maybe that's yeah. just normal well behavior. Or, or, yeah, most likely. That would make more sense. Mm-hmm. So Orchid ended up holding Brian underwater for 26 seconds, and as you saw in the clip, the trainers are trying to slap the water really hard, which is supposed to signal the Orchids to come to the front of the stage, and finally Orchid let go of Brian, and he was able to swim to the edge of the pool and limp off of stage. Luckily, Brian's only physical injury was a torn ankle ligament. But after the incident, SeaWorld made it a rule that five trainers must be available during shows where trainers perform in the water with orcas. But only two weeks after Brian's incident with Orchid, there was another incident at SeaWorld San Diego. And this time it involved a female orca named Kasaka and trainer Ken Peters. Ken was the most experienced orca trainer at SeaWorld San Diego and he was very well respected among the other trainers. And obviously he was very good at his job. So on November 29th, 2006, Ken was performing at a showing of Believe, if you remember that, with a crowd of about 500 people. For that performance, he was going to be working with Kasaka. Kasaka had been kind of stressed out before the show. She was sharing a backstage pool with her two-year-old calf, Kyla. And two trainers noticed that Kasaka was being pretty stern with Kyla and behaving like an angry mom. But they didn't think much of it, and they sent out Kasaka to perform Believe. One of the trainers gave Ken the heads up that Kasaka was being a little more vocal with her calf, and apparently Ken didn't hear her say that. The show started out normally, and all of the tricks were performed perfectly. Meanwhile, Kyla was getting pretty rowdy in the backstage pool, and one trainer said that she was just being extra goofy that day, but another trainer said that she was out of control. At one point, Ken was getting ready to perform a trick with Kasaka, and he swam about 15 feet down and got ready for the orca to tap his leg. But the other trainers noticed that Ken and the orca were taking a long time to make it back up to the surface. All of a sudden, Ken heard a noise and it was Kyla. She was in distress and crying out for her mother from the backstage pool. And that made Kasaka really upset and her behavior changed pretty quickly. Kasaka immediately pulled her rostrum away from Ken's leg and bit down on his ankle. It's terrifying just like how defenseless you are. Mm -hmm. Just in the water. Yep. Yep, out of our human element. 
So it looks like yeah. Kasaka dived down to go get Ken. And they're supposed to come up very quickly after. And they're not surfacing. Something's going on in there. Yeah. So, boom. Look Ken's that. ankle. And uh, she starts pulling him down. Uh, I, I, I just can't even imagine what mm -mm. you're... You just must be like, I'm... Yeah. I'm the done. things going through your mm. mind and the people around. Right, the tank right. and other trainers. Like, like uh, what do you even do? Slap the water? I mean... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're, the trainers are trying to slap the water at the top, but it's no use as Kazaka dragged him to the bottom of the pool and wouldn't let him up. It seems like they don't give a damn once they're like in this mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you're just powerless. You can't do anything. Yeah. They finally come up for a second, but still holding on. At this point, Ken was starting to breathe very hard. He knew from a scuba diving experience that he needed to get as much air in as possible in case... Kasaka dragged him back underwater again. And sure enough, that's what happened next. Kasaka dragged Ken back underwater. After about a minute, she slowly brought him back up to the surface again. And everyone watched helplessly as the orca held on to Ken. And they didn't know what was going to happen next. There was a protective net that separated the tank from the slide out stage area. And once Ken hopped over it, Kasaka noticed that he was swimming away. And she actually turned around and tried lunging over the net to get him. So Ken's trying to just get out of the pool at this point. He hops back up there. And he's like, oh, he's not safe at that point. Either. He's, oh my God. Knows that Kazaka's coming back up. God. Gotta be absolutely terrified. Luckily, the other trainers were able to get him to safety, though, and they started uh, treating his injuries. Yeah, God. It could have been way worse. Mm -hmm. He's lucky that he brought him up to the surface that one point. Cause, yeah, I know. Yeah, But despite this aggressive behavior and the attack happening, the day after, Kasaka went right back to performing in Shamu shows and interacting with trainers. Of course. And here's the SeaWorld rep justifying the decision. Mm. Those two thousands and thousands of interactions with these trainers, and they're all safe and gentle. So this is unfortunate, but it is an exception. It's very rare these things happen. But we want to focus the animals back on doing the correct, gentle, safe behavior. Like it's not we just that want, rare. Yeah, we just want to tell them. To stop we would it. like to brush this under the rug and move on. <laughs> For real, look how big they are. Yeah. Dude, it's insane. Yeah, we gave him a stern talking last night, and yeah, we grounded him. <laughs> Orca agreed to never do it again. No Wi-Fi for a week. So stupid. Yeah. So stupid. But that 2006 incident with Ken was actually history repeating itself. There was actually another incident between him and Kazaka back in 1999. That incident happened after Kazaka was split from her calf, Takara. Takara was taken to a back pool and Kazaka was brought to a show pool. She's clearly a very protective mother and the separation between her calf really stressed her out. So she started to swim really fast around the edge of the pool and then she grabbed Ken's leg and tried to throw him out of the pool. And luckily, Ken was helped out of the water by another trainer. After the incident in 2006 with Ken, OSHA warned that swimming with orcas was dangerous. They said if someone hasn't been killed already, it's only a matter of time before it does happen. I mean, it's just it's crazy. They know that when they separate Kazaka from her calves, that she displays this aggressive behavior mm -hmm. because she's pissed. And it's like the fact that they just sort of disregard this or act like, oh, you know, They'll be fine. Yeah. And they keep doing this over and over again. They don't want to stop. Right. Because they got to make that money. Exactly. They got paying customers. So there was another trainer that actually was killed in 2009 by a SeaWorld owned orca named Keto. But this was not at a SeaWorld park. This was at Laurel Park's Orca Ocean in the Canary Islands. So basically what happened was Alexis Martinez, who was 29, had worked at Laurel Park since 2004. And he was actually killed during a Christmas show rehearsal when he was attacked by the orca Keto. Keto pulled Alexis under the water and then rammed him in his chest. And he ended up dying of massive internal bleeding and injuries. And Laurel Park actually characterized the death as an accident and claimed that the body showed no signs of violence. 
but the subsequent autopsy report stated that Martinez, like I said, died due to grave injuries sustained by the orca attack, including multiple compression fractures, tears to vital organs, and the bite marks of the animal on his body. So it's not just SeaWorld that has had trainers die. There's been other deaths outside of SeaWorld and even by SeaWorld-owned orcas. Because if you didn't know, I believe most of the orcas actually originate with SeaWorld and then SeaWorld sends them to other parks across the world. There's a marine land in France, I want to say, that actually got some SeaWorld-owned orcas as well. But over and over again, throughout all these incidents we covered, it seems like the parks just always characterize it as an accident and that the trainer did something wrong as opposed to actually looking at the incident and, and realizing that the animal did something, you know, reacted in some way to something that mm -hmm. they likely had control over, like right. separating the calf from his mother yep. um, and not recognizing the imminent danger that the trainers are in or the trainers not recognizing it yeah. or not having, it seems to me like there needs to be somebody like, watching over this at all times like some sort of safety individual that sees those signs and immediately pulls you know stops the show or something like that the fact that they don't i think like it happens so protocols. fast that they really can't even I guess so yeah it's why these shows just shouldn't happen right but they notice the behaviors before the shows even start but rather than be safe yeah they just no. keep the show got going. It. the show goes on man yeah. the money's yeah, so. got to flow so like we said Blackfish came out in 2013. The park's profits dropped and SeaWorld immediately set out on a PR campaign to try to repair their image. But by that point, the public had already began to really turn on SeaWorld. In 2015, Steve-O, who I love, <laughs> Steve he's amazing, protested SeaWorld in a crazy stunt where he actually illegally climbed up onto a 100-foot crane and he held up an inflatable Shamu doll with the hashtag SeaWorld sucks painted on it and shot off fireworks. I can't believe that was 2015. I know. It doesn't feel like that long ago. No. Like just the other day. Oh, seriously. Or did he do another one recently? I'm pretty sure he climbed on something else recently. Oh, yeah. He did. He recently. climbs on shit all the time. <laughs> He's amazing. Love that dude. I'm going to be really high up in the air. Like. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of climbing to do. Shamie's getting filled up. We definitely have their attention. How many cops do we have? It's pretty gnarly getting out here. Oh my god, it's fucking terrifying. It's really creepy walking along that. It's really creepy. All right. <laughs> that is a lot, a lot of fire trucks. That really does feel like yesterday. That was 2015. That's crazy. I can't believe that. So Steve-O did get arrested for this and was sentenced to 30 days in a county jail. Worth it. And then the year before that happened, he actually got a traffic ticket for climbing up onto a street sign and changing it to say SeaWorld sucks. So in 2016, there was a bit of a win. SeaWorld CEO announced that they would be ending their orca breeding program. And this hopefully means that this will be the last generation of orcas in captivity at SeaWorld. They also seem to be moving away from the Shamu branded stuff because of all the incidents with Tilikum. And it looks like they're trying to figure out the future of these parks long term since there won't be live orcas there to perform. SeaWorld Abu Dhabi is scheduled to open in 2022. And the park won't feature any orcas, but it will have other marine animals, which there's a whole conversation to be had there as well. Because it's not just the orcas who suffer in captivity. Dolphins and other intelligent marine mammals who are trapped at these theme parks suffer too. Plenty of dolphins in captivity all over the world are forced to perform and swim with paying guests. I was just telling Josh when I was a kid, we were on a cruise and we did this like sketchy dolphin thing, my family and I, um, just like outside the cruise port. And it was just this right, tiny, just dinky, trap. dirty yeah, pool. Yeah. And these dolphins. And I remember they the dolphins had like these cuts all over their face. I'll mm -hmm. never forget. They looked like infected. It probably was yeah. infected from scraping the pool. Because mm -hmm. Which... if you put them in like a normal human pool, yeah. think of how rough the texture is. And They've also been known to like chew on the concrete out of boredom. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just so upsetting. And of course, as a kid at the time, I thought it was sweet. But now looking back at it, I'm like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. 
it's very upsetting to think about. Especially thinking that they like were captured right mm -hmm. out of the wild and right. then just put in these pools. In 2017, SeaWorld San Diego's theatrical orca shows ended. And their San Antonio and Orlando locations ended their live theatrical orca performances two years after that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the orcas don't perform anymore. Critics are saying this is not really a complete change. This is just a facelift. Is it in the same theater it was before? Yes, it's in the same space. But the experience and the subject matter and the behaviors and the things you'll see the whales doing, that's all changing. SeaWorld declined to comment on camera about Telecom's death. Marine mammal scientist Naomi Rose says captive whales can face health challenges. These large, wide-ranging, socially complex, intelligent animals are confined in such a small space and in such artificial social groupings. That kind of stress makes it more difficult for them to fight off diseases. SeaWorld has also announced that they are switching from theatrical shows, which were all entertainment-based, without a lot of educational info, and now they're going to be starting educational orca shows. This show is called Orca Encounter. So obviously this is an attempt to try to repair their image and make people feel good about seeing these shows. But these educational shows still have live orcas performing tricks and having close interaction with their trainers. Still gotta do the big splash. Yeah, for real. People go nuts for the big splash. Mm -hmm. And they're also showing videos of wild orcas swimming through the ocean during these shows. And they're talking about hunting, echolocation, all of that. But it's obviously incredibly ironic considering their own whales have been denied all of those freedoms and are right in front of these people suffering. Human whales are as big as a bus, faster than an Olympic swimmer. Yeah, that's fucking eerie. Look at it in the yeah. wild. That's like sadistic. And here's our whales that are in a swimming pool. And obviously we have focused today's episode on SeaWorld specifically, but there are plenty of other marine parks that breed orcas for live shows all across the world. And there are a lot of parks that use captive orcas in their shows, not just SeaWorld. There's an orca named Lolita who's 56 years old and has spent five decades alone in captivity at the Miami Sea Aquarium. She is the only other orca in captivity in the United States outside of SeaWorld parks. She's recently been retired from performing, but like the rest of captive orcas, she'll probably spend the rest of her life in a concrete tank. Which, here, like, the thing about this too is a lot of people say, well, these captive, you know, these orcas who have been bred in captivity. What, like, what do you want us to do with them? Just put them back into the wild. And I, to some extent, I do see that they don't have, you know, especially those born in captivity, they don't have those skills necessarily that they would acquire as a young orca in the wild. And so if you throw them out into the wild and release them, are they going to survive? No, because they've never had to fight for their own food. They get fed. Like, they don't have mm -hmm. those natural survival right. instincts. Plus, right. they've been in a filtered aquarium tank for their whole life. So there's likely bacteria other types of illnesses they might get out in the, in the ocean right that right. would kill them as well so it's it's difficult to you know i'm glad captivity breeding has been done but 
those whales that are still alive in captivity, it seems like the only thing they can do is just have them live out the rest of their life in captivity. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we just stop the next generation yeah. of whales being born in captivity for entertainment purposes. Yeah, unfortunately for That's, them, we're too right, far deep. Right. That's the only thing that we can do. My other my other thought too, and my own my own personal opinion on the future is I think, you know, talking about where do these parks go from here with mm -hmm. uh, animal encounters and things like that. And I, I think we're starting to realize and as technology evolves that we don't need to use real life animals to educate those and have a cool right. experience because now with technology, yeah. we are able to do really cool things. I want to show you two videos that are pretty cool that could kind of give you an idea of what the future looks like, especially for mm -hmm. um, zoos, potentially other types of animal encounters. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to go see animals in a sanctuary with large spaces and mm -hmm. they're not contained within the small area so that people can be guaranteed to see them that day. Right. 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 And there's lots of animal sanctuaries. There's lots of animal sanctuaries across the world that that put animals on acres and acres and acres. Um, there's a big cat one here in Colorado mm -hmm. where they're on this huge, huge area of land, and and that's a lot different than putting them behind glass and having people walk by them every day. Of course, day. and most of them are rescued. Animals, right, and, and obviously in some species they wouldn't survive uh, without right. being in captivity because they're that close to being endangered for mm -hmm. various reasons or right. um, things like that. But especially those super intelligent animals on the planet, like elephants and uh, orcas, whales, uh, dolphins, things like that. So check out this video. Um, if you'll pull it up, Janelle, type in 7D hologram uh, whale on YouTube. And this will give you uh, a kind of a cool idea of where we're going with holographic technology that we could create animal encounters that, that look real is that it? Yeah. Oh, That's wow. holographic? Yeah. That's 7D cool. technology. Wow. In Dubai, Poland, and Japan. There's wow. some of the different clips. But yeah, that's, that's amazing. A, isn't that Pretty cool? Pretty realistic. Right? Yeah. And then they can do elephants. Um, oh, wow. Pandas. 7D. Okay, this is sick. It's driving me. Yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, it's really bad. Look how cool that is, though. Wow. That's amazing. Especially that's for so kids. Cool. Like, if you want to educate yeah. kids, why not just do a where you can get up close and personal yeah. with a hologram without of the, the animal. Danger. Yeah. yeah. And without the suffering right. of the without animal. The right. Yeah, of course. Like, look how cool that is. Wow. That's sweet. And it's only going to get better and better as time time goes on with, uh, there's one, yeah. yeah, the giraffe. And you can predict what an AI creature is going to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody's going to get it. hurt. Right. Aww. There's no, yeah, you don't have to feed it. polar bear. It. Yeah, look how cool wow. that is. That's amazing. So they can make these holograms life size and have them do different things to, to showcase different educational elements of the animals like wow i mean that's super cool it's you know that baby's gonna be okay because yeah. of that giraffe yeah the elephant look how cool and that those is. kids are learning yeah oh yeah right. totally. about obviously about the animals but also about how to how to make sure they're not a, continuing the generations of abuse right, that we've right. you know sadly contributed to all of us <laughs> in the past penguins. years wow that's so cute <laughs> And then recently, uh, the band Fish had whales swimming. This looks so cool. And it was drones that created this illusion that everybody's in this tank. And there's these giant, almost like blue whales swimming above oh. your head. Oh, Did I you saw see that? this. Yes. See how cool this is? Yeah. Wait, yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. I don't yeah, think you can play the audio. Sound. Yeah. But um, this was really cool. I saw this. I was like, oh, I want to be at a show like this. Yeah, they have these like. Oh wow, so sick! I believe it's drones that are doing. Yeah, this. it was. Yeah. What? Which makes no sense. Yeah, I'm like, I can't understand that. That's cool. That's yeah, there's cool. actual whales too at one point. Uh, yeah, look at this. Whoa! <laughs> and you're seeing this like we're seeing this. Like you're That's looking amazing. above your head and you're seeing these like this giant is creatures. So sick. Also and, trippy. Right. Because you get to. Right, people, people yeah. do a lot of things. At oh fish. yeah, fish concerts. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you, if you know about, get an enjoyable experience. Get a kind of get the entertainment of animals without any animal suffering. Right, that's and so they cool. Move in such a natural way. It looks like they're swimming through the air. Yeah, and so it's like wow. I feel that as technology improves and this world of AI is both terrifying but yeah. also cool. Yeah, at terrifying. The same time. This last week with <laughs> the Google stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Google AI is alive. Holy well. shit. I'm terrified. I kind of want to do an episode on that, but I'm also like, I don't know. 
it's bringing me too much anxiety while I'm pregnant. So <laughs> doing that. Actually, anyway. the AI is not sentient. That was a Google engineer, I believe, who claimed that. But yeah. it, they're saying that's not actually. Sentient. Well, some people are disagreeing with oh, it, but we'll have to dive. Maybe we dive back into the world of AI again um, and where just technology is at right now. Yeah, but, maybe after I have the baby, though, because <laughs> my anxiety is really high these days. But yeah. But that that's just the one solution I think these parks can move to. Obviously, this is going to be very expensive to implement. But at the same time, you'd think they'd they'd save so much money on the yeah. maintenance and, and food. I mean, just the mere amount of mm -hmm. food they mm -hmm. have to to pay for to keep all their animals fed. All the water. Yeah, the mm -hmm. water that they the have to The treatments of the water, the vet bills. Mm -hmm. And you can still have rides and other, other types of you know fish and yeah what if you, know. you could build a roller coaster that goes through like the orca tank you know like think about right. the king kong ride at universal or you know some oh, of those yeah. some of those 3d yes. 40 attractions that one's are crazy with like king kong comes out and he mm -hmm. looks like he's right there and well isn't it like i've never been but atlantis don't they have a ride where there's dolphins you like go through a dolphin tank? it's real though yeah yeah and it's real but right. like they could start replacing things like that with these holograms yeah. and it look really oh, cool. Yeah, Atlantis has a slide. I've been there. You go down the slide and then you sh go through this huge tank of like sharks and all this shit and you're like, you've been there? Mm -hmm. <gasps> that was sick. I bet it was. It was, I mean. It's questionable though. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's questionable. <laughs> now yeah. that, you know. But when I was a kid, I was like, this is the coolest place ever. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think as a kid, a hologram would probably be pretty close to this to the real deal. Well, it's going to get to the point where a hologram is indistinguishable from yeah. the real yeah, thing. Right. We're going to get to a point where yep. what's fake is real and reality merges wow. as one. I wonder if we'll be taking our daughter to things like that. We probably will. We probably I'm will. I'm certainly not going to take her I think to theme parks. Are, this is the future of theme yeah. parks. I mean, yeah. you see it more and more every time you go back. You're like, oh, new ride there. Well, it, what kind of ride is it? Right. It's a virtual reality right. ride. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's where it's And headed. they're cool. Yeah, that Hong Kong or King Kong. <laughs> King Kong. King yeah. Kong. King Kong Island. Oh, I forget what this is. Yeah, it's oh, the it's island so one cool. where you're like on the truck and you're like going through. Yeah. And then like you got the dinosaur you. coming out at you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's the future of it. And, and hopefully it changes for the animal's sake because yeah. no, no orca should be in a, a no. aquarium. No, absolutely Just like not. no sh great white shark could be in an aquarium. No, intelligent animals just shouldn't be used, you know, by humans. It's just... It's just so upsetting for honestly. pure entertainment and mm -hmm. profit you yeah. know animal sanctuaries are a totally different thing because mm -hmm. there's a purpose behind it that isn't yeah just making as much money as possible and yeah. the care of the animals often better their environments often better the habitat is mm -hmm. uh you know much much more geared to what they actually would have in the wild as opposed to what's going to make for the best you know right. entertainment value for our guests that come through and it just all of this shows us that humans are going to be responsible for this change it's the backlash from Blackfish, the drop in profit that made the change. Obviously, it's not the change that we want right away, but we're starting to see that. And so, you know, think next time that you go to anything that's involved with animals and make sure that it's something that the animals are treating, being treated fairly, that, you know, it's a safe environment for them. Always opt for a sanctuary over a zoo. And, you know, we have to be the change we want to see in the world as like tacky as that may sound. It's it's so true. It is. It is. I mean, it, it has to be that way. Yeah. I mean, just there's there's no way we can move forward in the way that we did things. You know, a lot of the a lot of this started back in the 70s, 80s, and it was just a different time period now. And now we're just so much more aware of everything. Mm -hmm. and we are mm -hmm. educated so much better than we were back then. Yeah. And you know, be smart about your entertainment and technology. Let's yeah. utilize technology. I mean, we have all these all of these things that make life easier for us. Well, why not? Do things that make animals lives easier as well so. that's right but that is where we're going to wrap it up for today let us know your thoughts in the comments below and let us know if you would like to see some more animal content in the future we really enjoy talking i mean about we're this. animal lovers as many of you know we have yes. a lot of pets at home yeah we're, we got 10 we got 10 over committed <laughs> but we love we're filling the after effects but we're we love our animals so much <laughs> but I'd, I'd be interested in doing another exotic animal episode yeah it's very interesting or, or what i'm interested in too is going into poaching and like illegal animal trade yeah. and all as of upsetting that. as it is it's right. it's very important to speak about the black market of mm -hmm. of animal trade yeah yeah let us know what, you, what you'd like to see in the future animal wise but that's it for us today folks we will see you guys next time make sure you subscribe to us on youtube mm -hmm. apple Podcasts, follow us on spotify and follow us on social media, Malahar Pod.
We post a lot of a lot of different clips. We're on TikTok as well now, which is cool. We are on TikTok. So if you haven't checked us out on TikTok, uh, we are there. Also, be sure to check out our newest merch launch. Get your hands on it now. We do have limited quantities. And we don't know if we'll be restocking. So if you want something, yes. get it while it's available. That's right. It's milehiremerch.com. We do ship worldwide. Again, check out milehiremerch.com. We appreciate it. But we will see you guys next week with another episode of the Mile Higher Podcast. Until then, keep taking your mind. Mile Higher. <laughs> We're never going to get that right. I know.